фотограф, фактически современный классик, чьи выставки ждут в разных странах, чьи зрители, интерес зрителей всегда вызывается среди поколений, и его искусство подвластно разным. Мы... А перевод? Мы... Перевод для Кристиана. Вот мы что не учли. Sorry, we forgot to put your uh, microphone for the translation. Таков художник, эм, более того, болтанский э, из своей жизни, из повседневной жизни э, сделал, если можно так выразиться, артефакт. Я надеюсь, что мы об этом поговорим чуть позже. Таков художник, чье творчество э, прежде всего задает вопросы зрителю и не всегда стремится отвечать на встречные вопросы. Более того, он побуждает зрителя задавать вопросы и самому задаваться. Можно предположить, что наш сегодняшний гость не исключение. Современное искусство и не желает быть понятым. Оно всегда благодатное поле для вопросов. И именно поэтому мы, немножко облегчая нашим зрителям путь к пониманию творчества Кристиана Болтански, собрались сегодня здесь. И я хочу начать задавать вопросы с самого конца. Ваши ретроспективы, если можно уже начать, в Помпиду, которая проходит буквально сейчас и заканчивается 16 февраля, то есть вы еще можете успеть туда, она построена как путешествие. Это своеобразная метафора вашего творческого пути. Что произошло с вами за это время и куда вы прибыли? First, it's never a real retrospective because there's always the work that you don't love anymore. And also, uh, it's a little when you go back at home and you have nothing to eat and you open the fridge and you find uh, potatoes and some cheese and uh, you do something new with uh, this all materials and you do something new that you can eat. And in a way, when I make a retrospective, is, uh, I open the fridge with my head and I look to create something new with all my old pieces. And uh, what is very important for me is to uh, make at the end only one work. I mean, it's not several works, but all these work, some are very old, some are new, But as well, it must be exactly like one work. And uh, what for me also is something I always try to do is I don't want that the visitors are in front of an art piece, but they are inside the art piece. And uh, they're not going to say, I love this work, but I don't like this work. They are inside a very large art piece and, um, yeah. <laughs> ваше творчество если брать целиком оно работает с прошлой темой прошлой это это всем известно об этом пишут все ваши исследователи все ваши почитатели а при этом оно пытается поймать это прошлое его как-то зафиксировать поймать его суть оно эфемерно, оно исчезает. При этом вы работаете в такой форме искусства, как инсталляция или сайт-специфик, некая работа с пространством, которая создается тоже на момент, на выставку, на вот, вот для этого пространства, для этого времени. То есть с закрытием выставки работа демонтируется и тоже исчезает. И это такая двойная работа. Ваша работа с прошлым и ваша работа, которая становится тоже прошлым. Она не остается на века. Что вы по этому поводу думаете и как вы думаете, как в будущем после вас ваши последователи ваши, на ваших ретроспективах будут эти работы воссоздаваться? Будет ли это уже ваша работа? Или это будет что-то другое? Yes, that's a lot of That the, I mean, the title of the show is to make his time and in French language it's been two different things one is really to make the time and everybody make his own time especially an artist can make his own time and also 
is when you are old, you have made your time, it's finished. And this title was choose because it's a two meaning. Uh, for me, when I make a show, but I don't know what meaning right, exactly a retrospective is a show, when I, I make a show, it's a little when you go in a church, and uh, I, I'm not a believer, but when you go in a church, especially in South countries, the door is open, and you arrive and there's some smell, and there's a man who is moving his arm, and there's some uh, uh, music and some painting on the wall, and you don't understand what happened, and you sit and you stay there during 10 minutes, and you think about life, perhaps, or about yourself, and after 10 minutes, you say, oh, I want to have a dessert, and you go out, and you go to the sun, and you eat something. And I believe we need some places, only who are quiet, and only places that you can stay and think about um, important questions, perhaps. Uh, for the transmission, uh, there's two ways to, to make a transmission. Uh, there's one way with more occidental, and is by the holy relic, the little bones of a holy person. And uh, there's another way, I'm very often in Japan, by example, and in Japan the transmission is made by the knowledge. You know, the, for the Japanese religion, the Shintoists, they make a very beautiful temple, was well, 600 years old, but every 20 years they destroy it totally and they do it again. And there's people who are called national monuments or something like that because they know how to do it. And I think there's two ways to make a transmission. One way is by the object and the other way is by the knowledge. And for me, uh, I can say I choose mostly the transmission by the knowledge. Uh, now, 85% um, or 90% of my work is destroyed after the show, and you can do it again. Uh, by example, I made a, a very large piece uh, 10 years ago in Paris, in the Grand Palais, and this piece was uh, made also in Milano, in Shanghai, in Japan, and in New York. There was never a transport, but we do the piece again, and the piece was not exactly the same. It's a little like a musical partition that you can play in different way. It's always the same partition, but it's not exactly the same sound. And for me, um, when I make a show, uh, I destroy most of the work, but I can do it again after another show. Uh, I work... Uh, when I was 10 years, 10 years, a little more, a lot on theatres. And the beauty of, of a theatre play is that only the people who have seen the theatre play can speak about the, the theatre play they have seen. They know nothing, nothing was, and everything disappeared. And uh, in my case, it's a little the same thing. I mean, the object exists, and especially in a retrospective, it's very old object, and uh, well, often in museum, but the combination with all these objects are each time different and I create something new and something with only for this show and is going to disappear after and it's always some kind of a collage between the space and the work and this collage is a little like when you make an opera between the music and the text of the opera and uh, in a case uh, Life, like in my life, there's very few times of creation. And, uh, there was an, one time when I began to be an adult, and uh, I can say during these a few years, uh, when I was something like uh, uh, 24, 26, I understood everything I must to do in the future in my work. And after, uh, I have another time of creation when my parents die, and my work becomes more formal and uh, more visual. And at the end, uh, when I become very old, my art also changed, and that's the times that I'm narrow. 
and it's perhaps more about to create uh, mythology and uh, stories that to create really object. Uh, the last work I have made are um, more like to create some kind of a uh, yes, yeah, some legend, I don't know the name in English, a mythology. And, um, and there are no existence, they are, not they are only virtual. For example, uh, I made a, a piece uh, that I began 10 years ago, is to collect art beads. And uh, in the island in Japan, I have some kind of a small foundation and I collect art beads from a lot of countries and we have something like 80,000 art beads while there. And if you go and you say, I want to hear the art beads of my grandmother, there's people who can help you and you can hear the art beads of your grandmother. What is sure that if you hear the art beads of your grandmother who is dead, you are going to feel much more uh, absence than her presence. It's like when you look to a photo of somebody, you feel more so absent as a presence. But uh, this place is now in Japan a place for pilgrims. There is a lot, a lot of people who go there, but they don't go there because I'm an artist or because they like me. They go there because it's a place of, uh, to give a, the advice of a little child or to send the advice of an old person who's disappeared. And uh, that means, um, I believe in a way that mythology is stronger than the, the, the real artwork. And um, there's also, I don't know, a lot of projects like that. Um, there's, uh, by, by example, the, the time is say under the Cathedral of Salzburg in Austria, uh, in the creep. You can hear exactly like uh, at the telephone, it's 5 o'clock, 10 minutes, 5 seconds, 5 o'clock, 10 minutes, 7 seconds, so on and so on. And, and for me, uh, it's not necessary to go there, but it is important that the time uh, is under the cathedral, the time is set under the cathedral. Or uh, there's another uh, kind of a with the truth that I have sold my life to a man in Tasmania and uh, this man bought my life uh, more than 10 years ago and my studio and where I live are uh, filmed day and night if I am there or not there and you have a thousand of uh, no images of that yeah, there, there uh, you have it the uh, thousand and thousand of uh, DVD with uh, my uh, my studio, uh, who are totally not uh, totally stupid, you know, because uh, I, I do nothing in my studio, and most of the time it's only to I don't know to brush my my hairs or something like that, and I have no hair. Uh, but uh, uh, it's more like a story, and it's. Um, a man who bought the life of another man, and what that mean? Because, by example, for the, what is strange, that this man who bought my life, he can't look at me, because if you look at somebody all the time, you can't have a, your own life, and uh, he must to pay somebody to look at me. And also, he has, a, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of DVD, but he have nothing. He have, don't have my life and it, because he can't have my spirit. And uh, one other piece I made recently, I mean, I always try to ask questions about life, about why we're here. And uh, as I, I never find the answer, and I think there's no answer, and I don't, don't like answers. But I was in Patagonia and I heard that the, for the Indian of this part uh, of South America, they believe that the uh, wells know the beginning of the time. And I read very large Trump to and working with scientific people to make the voice of the wells and to ask questions to the wells. And 
be sure that the ones never answer me. And uh, these big trunks are going to fall down one day. And in the case nobody can find them because they are already in a very desert place. But perhaps the story of that a man, a man came and uh, tried to speak to the whales. And this story is going to stay longer than me. And uh, in any case, all my work from the beginning to now is some kind of little parable. I try to ask questions with my work and these questions that I try to ask for myself and also for the others, but there's never an answer. I hate answers. And, um, for example, there was a lot of, the, one of the big questions, or the biggest question in my life, that I, I believe that everybody is unique, and uh, at the same time, everybody is so fragile. I mean, everybody is unique, and for this reason, very important, but at the same time, everybody, they disappeared so quickly. I mean, you can remember your great father, but not yet, your great great father. And that's uh, very strange, very strange if you believe that everybody is so important. And uh, I try to preserve what I've called the, uh, the small memory because the big memory uh, is, are in uh, books. It's war, kings, but the small memory is to know how to buy the best a cake in Moscow, and uh, I will, everything with this, and we are made by all these small memories, a joke, something like that, and all that is going to disappear with us. And uh, for a long time, I tried to save all that for everybody, but it, it, it's totally impossible. And um, and in fact, uh, I my work is I always fail because I try to fight against the fight of disappearing and dying, and it's totally impossible. I mean, uh, all my, uh, at my age, I can say that I always fail. But I knew that for the beginning, I knew that it was not possible. And uh, in my world, there's a lot, a lot of people. Um, I, th I think at home, I have something like a, a 9,000 9, dead Swiss. And I've also something like 6,000 uh, Polish babies, uh, photos of dead Swiss and photos of uh, Polish baby. The dead Swiss, uh, they are not, it's a vanitas. I mean, I use a lot of the dead Swiss because uh, the Swiss, as a, first, you can find photos of dead Swiss when in newspaper in Switzerland, when somebody died, you have these photos in the chronology. And uh, also, uh, uh, the, the Swiss have no really reason to die because they are very clean and neutral and rather rich. But uh, for this reason, they were more universal. And I made a lot of pieces with dead Swiss, with photos of dead Swiss. And um, for the Polish babies, it was uh, also, I find that in the newspaper in Warsaw, and the baby are uh, only from one day. And in fact, it was a, a way for this newspaper to sell more copy because each Saturday there was something like a 300 photos of babies just just uh, born, and like that, the parents uh, bought a lot of copy because they were so proud that the baby was in the newspaper. But in any case, I have something like 6,000 Polish babies very quiet, and I made a piece with them at the Venice Biennale a few years ago, and the piece was about a chance or destiny is one of my big questions in my life. Because um, there was uh, all this baby, baby was turning a little when you print a newspaper very quickly. And uh, sometimes it was a computer who stopped uh, the machine and one baby was filmed, I mean one baby was choose. And uh, for me the question was that uh, if our parents made love uh, one minute before or after, we shall be totally different. And uh, the question at the end is, uh, if our destiny to be born, or it's only by chance that we are born. And uh, um, on the same way, uh, if uh, I'm, I'm a car accident tonight, 
uh, if you are a believer, you can believe that it is a destiny. And um, was right somewhere that you must to die tonight. And if you are not a believer like me, you believe it's only by chance. But in any case, in all my works, there is questions. And uh, and I try to, for me to be an artist is to give emotion and to ask questions. And it's also something very beautiful to be an artist that on the same time you speak only about yourself. But uh, for me, an artist, he has no more face. He has a mirror in front of the face, and each one who look at him see himself. And I think what is beautiful when you're an artist is that everybody can recognize himself looking at you. Excuse me, because you have, perhaps you have a question. Yes, <laughs> no, but you can continue. I mean, I was wondering why uh, I will speak Russian and translate it, will translate. Uh, мне было интересно, изучив ваше, все ваши работы, что на самом деле в вашем творчестве всего несколько работ, которые напрямую связаны с uh, еврейской темой. Их всего несколько, но при этом общепринято как-то известно, что вы работаете с этой темой, с темой Холокоста. Как вы думаете, почему это так? Потому что из-за опыта вашего отца э, или из-за того, что вообще общее какое-то европейское э, сознание теперь после посттравматическое всегда будет связывать проекты с памятью, с прошлым, с какой-то эфемерностью этого происходящего, именно с этим, именно с большой катастрофой? First, I never spoke about the Holocaust, and for me, it's something totally impossible to speak about the Holocaust. And uh, I think perhaps unlike Lance Mann with the film show, I can speak about that in a good way. And for me, uh, what is sure is that at the beginning of the life of an artist, there is some kind of a trauma. And that is sure that my trauma is that I was born in '44. And uh, most of the friends of my parents were survivors on the shore. And I hear when I was a little baby or two years, three years, a lot of awful story about this time. And I'm sure that was very important in my life. But uh, as and I try to speak about something with more universal, is the fight to die. Uh, I told you that I'm often in Japan. And the first time I, I was in Japan, I made a show. And the Japanese people were nice told me, uh, your art is so Japanese, and you must know very well the Japanese culture was not true. And uh, you look a little like a Japanese, you must have a great father who was Japanese. And I was very happy of that because uh, I hope if I have a show in Africa, people are going to say, oh, your art is so African, and you look like an African, and uh, your great father must be African. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's always the one who look at the piece, who makes the piece, and he made a pick with his own background. And uh, what an artist do is to send some kind of uh, stimulus. And uh, uh, one who look at the work, take this piece for himself. I mean, if you go to a cinema and if you, uh, there's a lot of people who see the same movie, but in fact, they don't look at the same movie because if you have lost your girlfriend one day before, you are not going to see the same movies as somebody who is very happy, by example. And each time is the one who looks to the art piece, who makes the art piece with his own background. And uh, in my case, uh, yeah, I, 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 you know, the question I have, I perhaps question were around the shore, but not directly of the shore. And there's never one image of the shore in all my work, and I think it would be a shame to use that. And uh, first, um, I'm half Christian and half Jewish, it's not so simple. And uh, I, I wish to be to speak about something that everybody can recognize, and something which is very 
universal. And it's totally impossible to speak about the Shoah because, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's these stupid stories. The first man who go to the moon, uh, somebody asked him what the moon looks like. And he said, uh, a field of baseball with full of all inside. I mean, you can't speak about something so different. And I think it's impossible to speak about the Shoah because there are no the words and to speak about it because it was a so strange and so different experience. But um, I, when I use Dead Swiss, by example, uh, it's sure that it's, I choose Dead Swiss because they were uh, neutral. And I, I don't want to, I couldn't work with Dead Jewish. It would be to uh, bring two work together. And, um, well, what I try is, you know, I, I believe, but that's for everybody. There is some doors who are closed, and everybody is looking for a key to open these doors. And uh, you can be in India, in Amazonia, or somebody in Moscow, or everybody is looking for the key to open these doors. And for me, there is no good keys, but to be human is to look for the key. And what I try in my art is to look for the key, but I know I can't find the good key. And, um, I mean, the, the Shoah asks a lot of questions about the fact to be guilty or not guilty. I, I, I really believe that uh, everybody can kill his neighbor. But, uh, and everybody can be also very nice to his neighbor. But in the case, uh, I, I, my art is not, is not directly about the Shoah. It's about uh, humanity. In some of the piece, I have a lot of problem with this work. It's called Menschlich, because the piece was made in Germany. And uh, in this piece, you have a lot, a lot of people. It's a very large piece, you have something like a, 1,000 photos of faces, and some are criminals, some are victims, some are Nazis, some are Jewish, and after that I can't recognize who is he, who is the bad and who is the good, and for me is a piece of cemetery. I, and Menschlich mean humans, because that's the only thing we can say that all these people were humans. And, uh, Also, uh, I'm not a believer at all, but I'm very interested in religion, and I think most of the religions are very beautiful and very interesting because they are mythologic stories. But perhaps there's two kinds of religions. Yeah, there's a religion where sometimes very dangerous when the people believe they have the truth, and then they find the truth, and that is very dangerous always. Yes, it's очень редкое явление, но тем не менее мы можем встретить работы, посвященные исследованию феномена Холокоста, а в творчестве художников, художников, которые никак не связаны с еврейской диаспорой и не имеют еврейских корней, таких работ крайне мало. Поэтому очевидно, что в воздухе витает некое сомнение о том, о моральном праве не евреев говорить об этом не евреев и не свидетелей. А такое же стеснение ощущается в неких академических кругах, когда говорится о этнических меньшинствах. Как вы считаете, кто имеет право работать с Холокостом, с темой Холокоста? Who are in these awful stories? For example, uh, I love uh, Germany, and I'm very often in Germany, and I'm full of German friends of my age. And very often, like a joke, I say to my friend, uh, "How was your father?" And always they answer, "My father was a marvelous man." And I said, "He was at the Nazi party." Yes, he was at the Nazi party. 
and it shows that you can be a marvelous man and to be as a Nazi party. And uh, you can uh, love your child and kill your child. And uh, unfortunately, the, the bad people doesn't look like devil, they look like us. And uh, we never know in some condition we can be awful. And perhaps everybody can be awful in some condition. And I mean, that's a question because I love them. I mean, Germany was the best country in Europe, the more philosophical, the very good musician. And, you know, and they do this. But I think what is a question for me, if we speak about the locals that I don't like to speak, is uh, to kill the Jewish is not so awful. You know, I mean, if I kill you, by example, we have an agreement and I kill you. But I know that you are a person. I know you are somebody, and I, I don't like what you have just said, and I kill you. It was just nearly normal. But what was really awful in the Holocaust was the destruction of the humanity, and that to put the names away, by example, to, to, to refuse the name, and to say we are going to wait for three ton of materials. I mean, for me, the humanity is so important, and it's perhaps more important to preserve the humanity that to kill somebody. Uh, I made a lot of books with only a list of names. And uh, for me to say a name, it is very important because if you say a name, there is Mr. Bobsky and Mr. Bluski. And that means there was two people different and each one is important. And to refuse a name is something awful. To speak about people like material is something awful. And I think what is really the worst of this story is the refuse of humanity and, uh, and also to refuse the tomb. Давайте вернемся к искусству, не будем про Холокост, а вернемся к искусству. Помимо содержания, которое вы вкладываете в свои работы, можно ли предположить, что вы ведете какой-то внутренний диалог с художниками, которые были или есть вокруг вас? А, с Янисом Пунелисом, с Микеланджело Пистолета. Вообще смотрите ли вы на а, то, что происходит вокруг вас? Вы когда-то в одном из интервью сказали, что вы минимали... э, экспрессионист, рожденный в эпоху минимализма. Но эта эпоха немножко уже... Э, Проходит, и нет ли у вас какого-то желания а, использовать более экспрессионические приемы художественные в вашем искусстве? It, it is true that is something that was very depressing for me. I mean, and we belong to a historical time. By example, between in, in France, between Watteau and David. Time is rather short, but the art is totally different. And perhaps that if I was born in art 30 years before, I shall be an abstract painter. And I mean, we are what we are, but we are also in a time of art. There is no progress in art, and that's the most stupid thing to imagine. There's a progress in art because the art is done better now than before. There's perhaps a progress in science, but not in art. But in any case, we live in a time of art. It's like a, a river and we are a little more far. And uh, I was born in the minimalist time and, and it is true that I think it was a good thing for me because my uh, spirit is perhaps more expressionist and perhaps too expressionist. And the fact that I have to use, because it was uh, what I've seen around me, a minimalist form was very important for me. I, I believe I am not a modern artist because, you know, I try to ask the same questions that, you know, there's very few questions in art. There's only uh, looking for God, uh, sex, why we're dying, the beauty of the landscape. There's very, very few questions in art. And uh, I use the language of my times, I mean, I use photos, videos, sounds. But in fact, the questions I ask are always the same, because from the beginning of the time to now, the questions are always the same, because we don't find the answer. And uh, for this reason, I, I, I 
I'm not so far from very old artists from uh, 40 years, 400 years ago. Uh, and uh, what you have said about my friends, that it shows that uh, when you are an artist, you have a great father, father, uncle, uh, nephew, aunt, uh, you are inside a family. And uh, my Joseph Boyle, by the point, is my great father, and Kunis, Kunis was a friend, is my uh, brother. And they mean, and for a young artist, I don't know, Phil Gonzalez Torres was one of my son. And uh, you know, we are always inside uh, the family of artists. And um, and we speak about the, with the language of our time. Uh, for me, uh, I try to, but perhaps you know, that's something I, now I believe that uh, I was born in the 20th century in Paris, but if I was born in Patagonia, I can be a shaman. If I was born in Ukraine, I can be a rabbin. No, it's not so different. I mean, it's only people who try to ask questions. And it's not so... I use, and that's a problem to make a speech like tonight, because uh, when you use words, sometimes they are too precise. Uh, and uh, only the poetry is not precise. But uh, when you use words, uh, sometimes you are too precise. And sometimes it is better to to use images. Because the beauty, perhaps, of the art piece that uh, people don't know if it is a uh, art or camel. And you know, it's, I mean, it's not too precise. And the beauty of the piece, of the poetry that the, pre the poetry is more precise and the less precise at the same time. But uh, I think now what I have changed after. Uh, at the beginning, I, I used more uh, minimal form, but it was always a little sentimental because, by example, I, I use biscuit boxes. Uh, I used a lot of biscuit boxes in my life, and uh, it's really a minimal object. But at the same time, we can imagine that in the grand grandmother house, uh, there was this kind of box to make the little treasures, the precious letters, and. These biscuit boxes are in the memory of a lot of people of my age. And also, when you see a biscuit box, it can imagine there is some kind of ashes inside. I mean, at the same time, it's really a minimal object. And at the same time, it's a very emotional object. And I try always in my work to work with something with emotional that everybody recognize, everybody know what it is. But uh, it is true that uh, what is the beauty of art also is that uh, uh, there's people who work with, like me with video and photo, but also people who work with painting, and painting would never finish. You know, I mean, it's not only there's not only one way to make art. There's a lot of way to make art. Uh, and it's, but now for me, what. It, is important is to try to think about the idea of mythology and not about object. Вы вы уже привели пример вашего мифотворчества и вашей работы с китами. Но это такие мифы не про героев, как древнегреческие или древнеримские мифы, а немножко о чудаках. Это очень здорово и было бы здорово, если бы этого было таких мифов было больше. Что вы Что вы под этим подразумеваете? Что вы в это вкладываете? You don't understand. No, I don't. I, I don't it doesn't work anymore. It, не работает перевод. Okay, you can say uh, yeah, I, I just said that you already mentioned your work with whales when you listened to the answers from whales, and it's also uh, myth making, and you are a myth maker. But it's more about uh, not about the heroes, but the ordinary people who. Uh, does uh, who do some very strange things and uh, what do you mean by that what uh, it would be great if those myths were yes, more in, in my in my case i mean i think everybody is very important that's something terrible because i'm sure that if you 
uh, sit in front of somebody in the metro, you can feel a love and you can learn so much about with this person. Everybody have so many things to say and so many things to give that it is true that everybody is very important, but you can't speak to everybody, it's not possible. But in any case, my art is not about hero, it's about a very simple people and normal people. Yeah. And um, one time I wanted to make museum for each person because each person can have his own museum or to write his own memory because each person can say so many things. That's why you agreed to sell your life to this Tasmanian billionaire because it's yeah. ready made, it's um, your museum. Yeah, but also uh, when I made this piece for a different reason. Uh, first, uh, for example, in my studio there's a staircase and it is sure that 10 years ago it was easier for me to go up the staircase at narrow and you can see that I'm older and older and also it's also to say that uh, he thought he had my life but he bought nothing because he had nothing, he had only some image, stupid images. Uh, what was funny with him that the way that I sold the piece uh, I, I sold the piece in a strange way. Uh, it's something we call in France, viage. That means he must to pay me until I die. And uh, this guy is a, uh, win a lot of money, uh, like a gambler, he's a profitable gambler. But he, he has a very, very large uh, collection of art and he created collections mostly about uh, dying and sex, but he have a lot of, he has five Egyptian mummies, I mean, it's a very beautiful collection, and only gambling. And um, he told me, I mean, we made some kind of a strange contract. Uh, I, I asked him for this piece, a large some money, and he decides that he shall pay me every month for little money. And uh, something like six months ago, uh, he gave me more money than I asked him for the piece. And before he told me that he never lost in his life and he was sure that I'm going to die before this date uh, and he's going to, to spend less money than I ask him for the work and in fact I win and I win uh, for now six months and I hope, I hope he's going to be totally destroyed if I survive 10 years or 20 years but uh, in any case it was also something about chance and destiny because somebody who tell you I never lost in my life and I'm sure you are going to die before 10 years is some kind of a devil. And the animal of Tasmania is called the devil of Tasmania, and I call him the devil of Tasmania. But, uh, you know, these this stories are a little stupid, but it's suddenly some kind of um, parable. And I tell that everybody can think about what that means to do that. What were you feeling when the term was uh, has to expire? Uh, Did you I, was, I was lucky. <laughs> I, I was afraid he kid me before because that was a money problem and only not to not to lost. <laughs> uh, but uh, what is important for me is to try to ask this question to everybody and everybody, you know, must to imagine that it's only for himself. And the, the, for me really the beauty of art is to speak about uh, my problem, but my problem becomes the problem of everybody. Uh, now what I love is this idea that uh, when I make a big show, only the visitors who have seen the show can speak about the show, 
because it's destroyed after and just like in theater. At the same time, I make some kind of a trans musical theater. That means there's two rules. I do that with friends. There's one rule with that uh, there's no beginning and no end. And people can stay the time they want to stay, uh, 10 minutes or three hours. And also that they are not in front of the stage, but inside the place. And they are lost inside the place. Where the, the last spectacle I've made was in the parking of the Pompidou Center, with the very large parking. And it was something made with the opera, what we call Opera Comic in Paris. And there was 52 musicians and singers. And there was something like 2,000 people each night in, the, in this place, in this parking. And the musician and the singer and the public was totally mixed. That means you are walking in, nearly in the dark and somebody was uh, under you and somebody began to think. And there was always something that you don't understand who was the singer, who was the public. And you are totally inside the music and inside, not in front of the music, but inside the place. And for me, uh, to, to work with theater was very important this idea is that ephemera, everything disappeared. I have more of like five lists of questions, but we don't have a lot of time. And I, I will ask the last one and then we'll give the audience to ask their questions. Um, in one of your interviews, you say that uh, artist life begin with, begins with trauma. Do you really need that? Do you really think that artists need the trauma to become an artist? I think perhaps everybody had a trauma at the beginning. And but it is sure that I, I love Louise Bourgeois, by example, and her trauma was a relation she had with her father. But after, there's a lot of people who have a bad relation with her father, but very few are working like Louise Bourgeois. I mean, it's not, it's not enough you know, to have a trauma. But very often, I, what I mean is that we always repeat the same thing for the kids. I always repeat the same thing. It's a little like a, if you make a travel in Italy, you can speak about the food, you can speak about the landscape, you can speak about uh, the people you have met. It's always the same travel, but you look at this travel in a different way. And for me, when you are an artist, you look, you speak about the same things, but you don't look to the thing in the same way when you are young or when you are old. It's always the same story, but you look and you speak about the story in a different way when you are older. But it's always the same travel. But you also, you also say that it's kind of second, second therapy, the art for an artist. Did the, your art help it, you it to It is sure that your... what is marvelous to be an artist is that you can, if you are sad, you speak about the sadness and you are not sad anymore because you give the sadness to the other, you, you show the sadness. You know, in uh, artifice there is also art. And in a way, you know, I'm going to say, oh, I'm so thirsty, I'm not thirsty, but people are willing to believe that I'm thirsty. And uh, when, you, when you're an artist, you don't have a life, you play the life. You know, it's no more, uh, sometimes, but that's a joke, I, I believe that the artist at the end of the life looks like the art piece they have made. And uh, by example, if you take Giacometti that I love, at the end of his life, he looks like a Giacometti sculpture. And uh, Francis Bacon looks like a Francis Bacon. And uh, I look like a biscuit box because I use a lot of biscuit boxes. And then you become your own art. And I, I, I think, in a way, you are, you are nothing, you are only your, your art, and that is very important for me. It comes your art. No, what I can say is that, I mean, uh, first, uh, but I, I can speak only for myself, there is very few time of creation. At the time of creation, I really, very special times. I mean, when you for me, when I became an adult, 
when I lost my parents, when I became old, then it's a very important time. And uh, also, there's, I was teacher a large part of my life, and I always said to my student, in art, there's nothing to do, only to wait and to hope. And I believe that the only thing we can do is to wait and to hope. But it's so difficult to do nothing that uh, I'm here today in Moscow to make this speech and after I make another travel. But I know that the only thing I must to do and I have to do is to stay and to do nothing and to wait and perhaps one day to understand a little bit must to do. But uh, in any case, uh, if there's artists around, I'm sure there's full of artists here, you don't have to begin to work at eight o'clock in the morning and uh, you have only to, to wait. And to be inside art, I mean, when I wake up on the morning, I don't work a lot. But when I wake up on the morning, I think about art. When I go to bed on the evening, I think about art. But it's not necessary to, to make art, it's only to be inside art. And uh, you can create, I don't know, one, one good thing to try to create art is to look at the TV and the most special stupid canal. And you are so depressed after some days that sometimes it can be good for your spirit because you are totally empty and depressing. And sometimes it can be good to, it can help you to create art. I mean, uh, I was teacher in an art school for a long time in Paris. And I love art school because art school is nearly the only un unuseful place that we can find today. Because all the schools are very useful. I mean, you become a doctor or a lawyer. But when you make an art school, uh, only you learn to look at the sky or you learn to look at the colored, but it's not directly useful. And for this reason, it's the most useful school that you can find because they are not useful. And, uh, but to be an artist is something so strange that uh, there are no rules. In any case, what I can say, that the worst thing you can say to a young artist is you are professional. An artist must never be professional. Unfortunately, I'm so old that now I'm a little professional, but uh, I hate artists who are professional. They must be mad, but not professional. And more and more, uh, the art scene and the art market and the art museum makes people professional. And I think it is not so good. A good point to stop me asking questions. And maybe there are, we have like 10 minutes. Примерно 10 минут на вопросы из зала. Как раз три вопроса. А только проверим перевод. Does it work, the translation? Yeah. А можно сделать так, чтобы работал перевод? But you can translate me. Thank you for your lecture. Uh, my question, uh, how to become a famous and successful artist? <laughs> uh, looking at the, stay, stay in bed and looking at the TV. <laughs> no, that means there's no rules and that's totally stupid. You know, it's a little like if you are in a, a and you say, oh, I wish to be a only person. How oh, I can be a only person? I, mean, I, I really don't know. For, for me, I was lucky. Uh, you know, I didn't go to school when I was a little boy. I left the school at 13. And uh, I didn't go to an art school also. Uh, I was more or less crazy. And I, I began only to, one day I made a little drawing and uh, my older brother said, oh, you have made something good. And it was the first time, that, first time that somebody told me that I made something good. And for this reason, I decided to be an artist. But, uh, you know, I think there's really no rules. And if you believe there's a rule, it's very, very dangerous. Uh, it's un the only thing you can do is to try to be alive. <laughs> 
Okay, so can I ask the next one? Um, I work in Gulag History Museum, which is a museum about trauma and memory. Yes, and for me, your works are professional and personal in what you do. And I noticed that probably it is one of the first cases you use both personal stories from your childhood and from your family, uh, and stories you found in newspapers and somewhere else. Um, what is your uh, artistic method? Do you use research? Uh, so trying to find the material for the questions you have or the questions come from the material. And the second question, if it's polite and possible, um, you mentioned that you have questions, not uh, you ask, and uh, this is the works, the works you do are answers uh, to these questions, and which is the question you have in your mind now, if it's possible to answer. Uh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> In the show, the Pompidou, there's nothing of my family. There's only uh, one photo of my from mother and father, but they are very high somewhere and nobody can look at them. And I, they, I never use my family in my work, and I never use my own life as the work. Uh, there's a, there's a, in the first room, there's an album photo, but it's not my album photo, it's a photo of somebody else, and I never use my own life. Uh, what you have said for the question, uh, yes, you know, I, I, I try to work, I, I can try to explain my, the work I'm doing now, but, uh, you know, uh, yes, uh, it's very difficult to say that. I mean, by the, the piece I'm doing now, um, you can buy uh, something called Getty Image. And this image is that you can buy for a very little video that you can buy for a very small price. is really beautiful life, beautiful sunshine, beautiful animals, beautiful sea. And I'm going to use this kind of stupid image. And inside the image, I'm going to hide awful photo of a massacre, of horrible things. You are going to have awful images that you can't see, or perhaps you can see a little sometimes. And that's for me also some kind of a parable to do that uh, everything is marvelous, but in fact, everything is awful. But we don't want that to find that everything is awful. У нас есть время еще для одного вопроса. Okay, uh, I wanted to ask a question about the ambiguity in art. Um, so most of your, some of the works are connected with the, with the question of Holocaust, and uh, you were talking about preserving the as individuals, but art is ambiguous, and all people who see your works perceive them in different ways. And from one generation to another generation, the knowledge itself changes. And what do you think about the, the memory of the events being changed through the time? I didn't understand. Можете повторить, пожалуйста, потому что я могу на русском. Давайте. Я хотел спросить именно про. Do you have translation? Okay, I will translate. Про то, что искусство меняет сам саму историю, то есть взгляды на искусство бывают разные, особенно если это искусство, как было сказано, живет инсталляцией. И вот эта вот память и сама, ну, память о событиях, она может измениться через людей, которые это искусство получает и видят и анализирует. Что вот автор думает по поводу изменения самого, самой истории, самого посыла? Вы имеете в виду, что если искусство отражает какое-то историческое событие, оно изменяет его? Ну да, просто... Uh, uh, the, the art, uh, art itself, the art object changes the historical events when you reflect on those effects, uh, on those art. It 
changes your pers um, your perception of the history of the past through uh, the art. You know, because yeah, I'm not I'm not an historian. Now. I'm an artist who is totally different, and uh, I don't speak about the Holocaust. I speak about Dead Swiss, <laughs> and all my art is about Dead Swiss. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, now I work with Dead Swiss for so long time that I can tell you that all the Swiss die. Tell the Swiss die. And uh, and that's that's. Uh, that's what I can say about that. And all my art is about dead Swiss. <laughs> Wait, uh, let's have another question, not about dead Swiss. <laughs> <laughs> to finish on something more. The dear Christian, thank you so much for your speech. Uh, very beautiful. Дальше на русском и плохо на английском. Я был в Пушкинском музее на вашей инсталляции, и меня просто поразило, она припила, честно говоря, вот я сидел и просто созерцал и, а, эту атмосферу, эту инсталляцию, да, и поистине это оказало очень сильное впечатление. Вот, а вопрос состоит из двух частей, на самом деле. Я пишу, ну, пишу о мафии, то есть у меня рассказы, криминальные писатели. А, вот есть у вас работы, посвященные криминалитету именно. Вот, недавно вышел фильм The Irishman Мартина Скорсезе. Я вот, просил раз... положительный вопрос. Да, а вторая часть положительная будет как раз. А, что вас вдохновляет из сферы искусства, из литературы, из, так сказать, художественной области, скульптуры и так далее? Почему, как рождается этот поток внутри вас? Спасибо. I think all that is really too precise. I mean, I know nothing about mafioso. I mean, in fact, uh, uh, you know, I'm half what I told you before. Half, I'm half Corsican and half Jewish. And in France, all the Corsican people are mafioso. <laughs> they are all in the police are mafioso. Corsican people have a very bad reputation. But in the case, I know nothing about my future, and it's not so precise. I mean, the question I ask are, what does it mean to be guilty? Can I be, if it's possible for me to be guilty, you know, this kind of question. Can I kill somebody, or can I, if I can't, or if I can kill somebody in some condition? I, I want to, I, I, by, well, I believe to the law. I think the law is something very important. You know, it's this kind of question, but it's not precise. And it's not uh, about uh, mafioso or story or politic. Uh, uh, my art is not a politic art or not a precise politic art. I think it is a politic art, but not precise about uh, 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 communists or not communists. I don't care, you know. Uh, my, my art is about existential question. What, and sec there was a second question, what, uh, which artists do inspire you? What, well, what, I, what I told you, I mean, uh, my favorite artist, I can tell you, is Pina Bosch. Um, Pina Bosch is a German dancer who died uh, three years or four years ago. And my other master, is a Polish uh, theater man called Tadeusz Kantor, who died 20 years ago. And it's strange because the, my two favorite artists are not from the visual uh, art scene. And also, if we take about a uh, visual art scene, uh, my favorite artist is Giacometti. But for his life and for how he speak about humanity. But, uh, uh, you know, it's also a stupid question because I love 3,000 artists and there are 3,000 very important artists and uh, I love Picasso, I love Matisse, I love whoa, 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 so on and so on, you know. I, mean, uh, I love Malevich, I love, uh, you know, the, there's no stop. If it's... Let's
Thank you very much for your speech. Um, I have a sort of professional question. My work. I mean, sometime I made a piece, and two or three years after I understood better why I made this piece. And sometimes I understand better my work a few years after I have made this work. And uh, sometimes you do something but you don't know exactly the reason. And after you understood the reason. And you know what I mean? It's very difficult to speak about creation, but all that. I mean, uh, by doing a long time, you are in front of a wall and you don't do what to do, and you are very unhappy. And one day, but not so often, I can say, this wall open and you believe that you can find something. But most of the time you are really blind. You don't know what to do, and you are totally lonely because nobody can help you when you are an artist. And. Uh, I mean, uh, when I was a teacher, I always said to my student, in art, there's nothing to learn and nothing to teach. And I can say, at the beginning of the year, I had something like 20 students, and at the end of the year, there was only three or four. Mostly Japanese, because they are very polite. <laughs> but it's true that in art, there's nothing to learn and nothing to teach. It's only something who is inside you. And I, I was a teacher during, I don't know, 30 years or 40 years. And in my life, I believe that I saw five artists, then I, mean, I have perhaps 800 students, and perhaps at the end there was five artists, and that's a lot. But we never know, and if you take, that's something I made a few years ago, I made the list of all the people who were at the Venice Biennale, all the artists who were at the Venice Biennale. And it's a book, and if you read this book, perhaps a good art historian now will know only 20 or 30. And all of them says, I don't know, 500, nobody can remember them. And it shows that in 10 years, if you take 10 artists, five will be always there, five are going to have totally disappeared, and the five that nobody know and nobody speak about them are going to be present. And we never know who is going to disappear or not, and perhaps it's not so important. Yeah. What is important is to try to, to make art, that's the only thing that is important. It's a little like to be religious. If you are religious, you are not a only person, but you are religious and it's perhaps enough to be religious than to be an early person. I think it's time to finish. Thank you so much.